Okay, welcome back. I'm your host, Michael Kennedy. Today we're going to cover the inspector, which is a tool located in the pages program. I want to point out here, the inspector is something you'll get used to uh, relatively quick. It's, it is the same tool that's used in all of the iWork suite. So the great news is once you learn how to use this inspector, you'll be able to use this inspector in also um, Keynote, and you'll be able to use it in, where is it, Numbers, which is a spreadsheet application. Everything looks identical. You don't have to learn a new positioning or a new place where a tool is located. You learn this one palette, this one group of palettes called the Inspector, and you know this for all three applications. And the great thing is I believe it, it, it is the same exact one in, I don't know if I have it down here, uh, in iWeb, for those of you who are going to create some websites. So what is an inspector? Well, the inspector is a, uh, a group of palettes that contain several different tools. As we can see here, we can hover over these. It says the document inspector. And we have a layout inspector, a wrap inspector, a text inspector. And I'm going to go through these relatively quick. Uh, you don't have to worry. I will cover all these as we start building documents. And uh, I'll try to use every tool inside here so you can get an example of how all these tools are used and how they can apply specifically to education and student learning. So inside the document inspector, we have many popular tools. It's really a, collabor uh, a culmination of all the most popular tools that are located in all these uh, drop down menus. I have covered all these drop down menus, but some things are not covered, like the advanced features. It, you can't really pull all these advanced features out of the inspector. The inspector is really something that you're going to use as you're creating a document. Um, it, you're navigating back and forth, back and forth, by altering images, and masking, and creating margins. So let's go ahead and cover the inspector really quick here, and uh, then we'll get right into creating a document. So the first page, uh, first palette, I should say, in the document inspector is the documents palette. And that covers the page setup, which does your uh, your landscape, you know, the page orientation and your paper size. We've already covered this in the uh, previous tutorial. And also on here, we have the uh, facing pages, which I showed before, which allows you to see two pages at the same time. In this case, they only have one page, as you can see right here. I have one one of one page, so it's it's not showing the face, but it did move over to the side. Uh, if I created two or three more pages, you would see them showing like a book. So um, we have our page margins, and if you could take a look right here, you can see I have um, one inch margins. Well, I can go ahead and change those, which is really great. Uh, I can go right down to a half inch margin. I don't need to know how to drag these little um, bars around, although you can do that. In fact, let me show you as I move these around. Um, oh, that's the tab. Let me go ahead and move this. You can see that it's already changed here. It's changed that tabbing, um, the margin. So I can adjust these with just using the arrows up and down. I can type inside of them and change the um, change the number, 0.05. You can see there's almost no margin there. Um, it's a 0.5. Okay. Please, please do keep in mind that um, with printers, uh, printers generally require at least a half inch margin on the sides the top of the document has to be at minimum 0.5 and 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 i'm not saying all printers but the vast majority of printers and this is the tricky one the bottom of the page which is usually the last part of the page to come out of a printer needs to be a minimum 0.6 not 0.5 so if you want to maximize your real estate on a um on a document and try to fit some more information in there. These are the um, minimum numbers you're gonna be able to use. Left and right margin will be 0.5, and uh, top will be 0.5, and the bottom will be 0.6. So uh, we have a headers and footers. Um, in this case, if I click inside the header here, you can see this little box, it's a half inch right now. If I wanna make that header drop down to one and a half inches down, I can do that just by using the arrow keys. Again, I can type inside here. Um, and the same thing with the footer. If I find the footer down here, there we go. I can move the footer around just by clicking these buttons. And I can remove the footer by removing the checkbox. So uh, next, we have footers and endnotes. Uh, do you want to use footnotes, section notes, or document endnotes? Uh, great option. Again, this, as you can start to see here, it, it should be coming intuitive to you that footnotes and endnotes, it's right there on the page. That's a formatting piece. It's, so it's on a formatting uh, palette. And there they are. 
they're not hidden. Um, there's no secret surprises or no uh, secret tools inside the inspector. And then the formatting of those endnotes. And I'm going to teach you in an advanced series how to change these and add some uh, unique symbols and things if you need to do that, especially for like science and math. Um, and then numbering. If we start numbering, do we want that to be continuous, restarted on a page, and restarted at a section? I'll probably demonstrate how this works when we create a more uh, complete document, but um, that's pretty powerful. So if you want to do one numbered list on one page and then restart that on the same page or restart it in the next section, and uh, just a reminder, sections are located right here. Those are the um, pages that you can insert when you're using a template, and we're going to teach you how to create these too. So space between notes, uh, 10 points. Uh, we can increase and decrease that. And do you want to hyphenate? Uh, let's hover over this. Oh, I should put that point that out right now. Um, hyphen, hovering over these, it will give you a little yellow box. It'll tell you what it actually does. So select and select to turn certain letter combinations, for example, phi into one character. And uh, hyphenate, hyphenate words automatically. I'll take that and require a password to open. If you select this, it will bring up this little dialog box and it will allow you to create a password. So if you don't want students being able to access a document that's online or maybe only access at a certain time when you give out the password, you can type in a password, verify that, much like you do when you create an email account. You can even give them a hint and uh, you can set that password. So if I wanted to put a password of cats, C-A-D-S, um, the key here tells me on how strong of a password it is. In this case, it says the password assistant tells me um, it's, it's a little weak. The quality um, right here is in the red, and it's suggesting this. Uh, in this case, it's using numbers, letters, and symbols. So let's show you the difference here. I'm going to copy that. I'm going to go up here and paste it, and you can see now the quality has jumped up. Um, so if I go up here and let's say I just throw in some more numbers, use some uppercase, lowercase. Now, obviously, you would not want to give out this password to students. I doubt you would remember it as as unlikely as they would remember it. Um, but you can see the quality. If it's a very sensitive document, you want to increase the size of that password. Um, and you could go up to 30 characters long. Um, see, I would not even try to remember this password. But um, And you can bring it down to a minimum of eight characters. And uh, they're, they're saying, hey, this is a suggestion, you can just do one character if you prefer. So uh, I'm going to cancel out of this. And we're going to move on. And when we come back, we will cover the rest of these palettes.